In this video, I want to accomplish a couple things. One, I want to talk about how people often use constants. And um, it's basically a way of people organizing their action names. And so we're gonna, people use constants often to do this. Um, we'll talk about that. Two, I also wanna talk about how, given our lister that we have here, how we would be able to, let's say, click on one of these items and delete it. And so we're going to extend this app by refactoring a bit and by um, giving it a little bit more functionality, giving it the ability to delete items. Let's start with constants. So if we look at our lister and our map dispatch to props, and so this function right here is what creates these um, this function mapping where we say okay if somebody calls input change we're going to dispatch this action and if someone does submit then we're going to dispatch this action this action so we've got a type that's a string right here the problem with this approach is you are very susceptible to spelling mismatches between here and in your reducers here by moving everything to like a separate constants file and like having a reference for your actions can help solve this so let's actually refactor to that so here in the store I'm going to create or at least a store folder create a new file called constants and it's this is going to be a fairly uh, small file at least at first um, in an application so export default let's export an object and let's go look here in our store in our reducer and say we're going to export something with this name like so and with this name like so now, if we bring this in, import constants from here and console log, we'll see what we get. What are the constants? Well, here I am console logging a string without actually console logging the constants themselves. That wasn't useful. Okay, so we see an object, and it has exactly what we put in it, two properties, one called add item and one called change text or input text, which have the same strings. You might be wondering, why is this useful? Well, let's use this down here and see what happens. So now we've changed this, changed the reducer to use these constants. Let's do the same thing in our lister. So from here, um, it can't get to constants by going to dot slash constants because it's in a different folder. But it can go to store slash constants. And then we can say constants change text input and constants dot add item all right let's confirm that everything still works okay adding and check text input changing all works so it's all good what have we done what have we accomplished well what happens if you mistype this Let's say you were going from memory and uh, you type this right here backwards. So this is not a valid constant. So we come in here. Oh, snap. Uh, we get an error. Actions may not have an undefined type property. Have you misspelled a constant? And as a matter of fact, I have. And so uh, what's going on here is this is trying to get a property from that object, which doesn't exist because we don't have a change text input, 
that would change input text. And so we get an immediate error at this point. Contrast that with this situation. Let's say here in the um, here in the lister, we had just instead turned this into a string. What kind of error would we get here? We wouldn't get an error, actually. It just wouldn't work. Because what's happening is it's sending the text in a string to the reducer. And the reducer just doesn't handle that. There is no change text input here. And so it just goes through here, hits the default, and runs, runs on through. So no errors at all in this case. Um, and so this can help you catch your own errors, your own mistypes. So this is pretty handy. This right here, I think, is actually enough of a reason not to, um, to, to not just put your strings in. Uh, I wanted to wait a little bit to introduce this. We could have introduced this early on. Just thought I'd wait a little bit. But I would go ahead and, for all your Redux stuff, create a file and create some constants, just like so. Now, another benefit of this is this has a single place that you can go to and look at a list of all the actions that can take place in your application. This is kind of nice. You might be thinking, but I can go to the reducer and see that. And that is true for this application. Uh, soon, we will be talking about how to have multiple reducers, which means these items will be spread out across multiple files. By having this in one file, we make this a little bit easier for ourselves again. So that's, that's an advantage. So now that we've refactored to this, I then want to add this new bit of functionality. And then we'll use it, we'll, we'll do this in the context of using the constants. And so that way we can get a little practice of, with it before we finish up this video. So what I want to do is, whenever we're doing our listing, right, and you click on this one, it deletes. How do we accomplish this? Well, if we think about what we need to do in terms of Redux, here's our basic flow, once again. We've got a component, and so we need to do the click, and then we need to create an action for deleting and dispatch it, and then the reducer will handle that action. When the reducer handles that action, it needs to have enough information to do what it needs to do. So if we think through here, and if this is our state, what information does the reducer need to remove, let's say you have 10 items. What information does the reducer need to remove the fifth item, if you've clicked on the fifth item? And the answer is, uh, at the very least, I could take an index. If you know the index, it, it can come and splice out that value and then reset the, the array into state, and then you've got an updated application. So let's follow through with that. Let's add a click event in the component create an action for deleting the item, let's dispatch it, and then have the reducer handle the action. Go to our lister. Well, we need to di map dispatch to props because we need the item click, so item click. Or, how about this, item delete. This is a better name. Let's not put that in there. Let's let's think about how we're going to do this. So I know what we need to do is we need to create an action. We already discussed that. And uh, let's see, what do we need to do? Well, we need a new constant because this is not adding an item or changing an input text. Uh, we need a new value. So let's go to constants and we will call it uh, delete item. Like so. Uh, constants dot delete item. Okay, cool. Let's see if that gets dispatched through. So dispatch. And how are we going to hook this up? Item delete. Well, let's just go in here and say 
on click equals props dot item delete. Okay. Oh, this is going to be great. So let's look and see this when we click. Oh, snap. I totally didn't see this coming. We have accidentally mistyped our constant name and are therefore immediately notified that, hey, you must have a type property because it's undefined. I can't believe I missed that on accident. Okay, so I'm going to go back and fix that. Okay, so our delete item is coming through to the reducer. We have successfully sent that through. Cool. Uh, let's see. Now, back to our discussion from earlier. We need to send the index on through. Okay? And so if we need to send the index, that means we need it right here. Uh, if we need it right here, well, where are we going to get it? Well, this function here doesn't uh, doesn't know anything about the mapping through of the items or whatnot. It, it has no way of knowing what the index is magically. Therefore, this is totally something we're going to have to pass in. So we need to figure out how, whenever we call item delete, we can pass that value in. So going up here to our component, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, uh, what I want to do is put this on multiple lines because we're going to have to make this on click a little bit longer. And so on click right now is just firing this item delete. If we were, for example, to console log what is coming through right now. I'm going to change this from, uh, let me get rid of index for just a moment. If we want to console log what thing is, what would it be? Think in your head as you're watching this video, what would thing be right here? And it's nothing special from Redux land. It is proxy dispatch target O. Oh, so this looks a whole lot like an event object and it actually is an event object. And so what's happening is whenever we do an on click with this, uh, it fires this, it will pass the event object as we would expect from normal React. It would pass this into here, so that's what this is right here. Now we don't need that in this case, this is not useful for us. Uh, what we need is we need the index. And as it is right here, we don't really have a good way of passing that in. So let's change that. And so probably the easiest way of doing this would be instead of just supplying this function as the function for onclick, let's wrap that function call in another arrow function, like so. Now we actually have complete control over what gets passed in right there. And so we can say index, index. And now we have our index. All right, let's see if that gets passed. We should be able to look in the reducer and see an index coming through. I clicked on the second one, so the index is one, naturally. Zero, if I click on the first, if I click on the third, it is the second, uh, it is two. So, hey, that worked, that totally worked. And so we've got this working just fine. We are sending the action, we're creating the action and we are sending it and it is hitting the reducer, but we are not currently changing any of the state. So let's do that. Case constants dot delete item. Okay, this will be cool. Um, let's console log and see what happens here. Okay, cool. Oh, we're not hitting our reducer. Well, at least we're not hitting the case. Why? Because we're not seeing the console log. Unfortunately, the constants approach uh, did not save us from another completely accidental misspelling. Um, it just doesn't cause any errors, which is frustrating. Um, 
So there you go. So the constants then helps, definitely helps, when it comes to sending actions. Uh, here, it doesn't help quite as much. It's still good documentation, so it's still useful in that sense. Uh, but it doesn't actually give us a nice error telling us we did something wrong. Because in the other case, we do want to know immediately. And we do want to know in this case, it just doesn't help us here. So there's that. OK, I need to change my state. So if I have items in the array, for me to remove a thing, I need to splice the thing out. So how would I do that? Well, let's do it this way. Uh, for me to splice the thing out, first I would actually want to change it. Uh, I want to get a new copy of the array before I splice it out. Uh, so I'm going to say const uh, copy of items equals. Uh, how would I get a copy of that? Uh, state dot items dot slice and so this should get us a brand new copy of it I'm gonna say copy of items dot splice I want to splice a certain item out and so what do I need well splice the first argument is an index and where do I get it oh well, I passed it in the action of course so I have that and then I want to splice one thing out of the array what splice does is it it's let's say you have an array of ten things and you say splice things whatever is at index six it will take index six out the item there and then shift everything after that up one so you'll still have something at index six it'll just be the next thing that got shifted down so basically it's taking an array taking something out of the middle of it and putting it back together splicing it together like you would some wires. So that's what the splice will do. So we made a copy. Uh, we spliced them back together. Then we are going to now do our fairly regular thing of sign state items. And we are going to replace the current items with the new copy which actually had the spliced item out. So let's try that. Get rid of that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Excellent. So we have succeeded. We have, in fact, hooked up a click event to the item. We then created an action, and we put the index in that action so that we could dispatch it to the reducer, and the reducer could look at that index it could then remove the item from the array, update the state, so that the component could then update. And we also talked about this idea of using constants, or a constants file, um, and, or a constants object, however you want to talk about it. Uh, it definitely helps a lot over here, because if you ever try to send an action in without a, a type name it'll give you an error which is exactly what you want because you should never do that so you can see that error and you can fix it the constants helps here because if you misspell this you're gonna get undefined and you're immediately notified so it doesn't help it helps tons right there here it doesn't help as much it's still better because you have this authoritative list of actions um, but but you don't get an error right off the bat so that's kinda sad but it's still as a practice it's good alright so uh, that's that video uh, constants, uh, use them, it's good practice. And um, another example of this Redux flow, except this time with the deleting an item from the list.